people's emotions are they're expounded. Maybe they've had recent losses or something. So I ask this Christmas that while we're celebrating Jesus, that we remember those around us who are in need, and that we would have empathy towards them and raise them up and let them know that Christ is still king. This morning, every year it's new and fresh when we come to Christians, but this morning I want to share with you the greatest story we ever told. Sunday. Thank you so much and welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you to this beautiful hallmark moment that we're having. 
take a moment and look out the windows. Now, I don't want any of you to think that that happened by accident. <laughs> this was all planned for you. God had all of this in mind for us today. Let me start out by saying that I believe in miracles. God doesn't promise you or me miracles. He doesn't promise that anywhere that I've been able to find. But I have watched over and over that people who follow Jesus, who come to Jesus, they come to the one who gives miracles. And when, when it provides glory for his church, when it provides encouragement for his, for his followers, God delivers miracles. When I got up this morning and saw these snowflakes, I thought, how fitting for us at Zion to have this moment on the day of the Festival of Lights. How fitting. This indeed is the concept of Christmas, coming together out of the snow, out of the cold, and into the embrace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at this Christmas time. So, from the very depths of my heart, and without any hesitation, I say to you this morning, to all who are watching, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and that's not spelled with an X. That's spelled with, that's spelled with Christ in our Christmas. This will be a very special moment, a very unusual moment for you, and something I hope will become an annual experience for us, the Festival of Lights. And I, I want to pause and say that for those of you who are watching on the live stream, you can't really take in the depth of what's going on here. Let me explain. We have our, our candle holder over here, a place for the candles, and it's handmade. And it just, when I walked in today, I thought that was the manger of Jesus. So that symbolism, I did not expect, and yet I'm very thankful. So for the hands that made this, thank you. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. And, and this snow, I suppose we just have to thank God for the snow, that here we're having this hallmark church moment. And the only reason I say that is because they always have everything just exactly perfect on those hallmark movies. Well, move over hallmark. We got it on time. And we didn't have to pay any producer to make it happen. It's beautiful. Today will be unusual because you're going to preach the sermon. But I'm going to provide the scripture reading first. <laughs> Welcome. And I want to say a couple of things. You don't have to go anywhere today for lunch. We've got you captured right here. Right after we're done, we're going to be having Bob Evans, IHOP, Tudors, anything you can imagine is behind that door. <laughs> Christmas lunch for you, so don't dare go away. And I hope, I came prepared, I hope, that I'm going to be making your pancakes today. I don't know if you've got that planned for somebody else or not. I brought all my equipment. And for some of you young people and adventurous adults, we will also make you Mountain Dew pancakes. <laughs> Diabetics, stay away. <laughs> Sorry. I did not bring Diet Mountain Dew, and it just does not fluff up a pancake like Mountain Dew. But if you want one, we'll fix you one. Now, we've got normal ones, too. So, Peggy, quit looking at me like that. <laughs> I also want to tell you that the Christmas story is found throughout the New Testament and the Old Testament, too. So you don't have to just always turn to Luke and some of the other passages that we normally would read. I didn't have to break stride at all as we're preaching through Ephesians. Our message will come right out of that book. And again, it's all God's plan. Go with me to chapter 5 in Ephesians, if you would. And go to verse 8. Chapter 5, verse 8 and following. 
follow along because the outline of this message and your message and our message today is found right in the scripture. I'm going to tell you what God wants for you, how he delivers it. I'm going to tell you what to buy this year for Christmas. That'll be helpful one for some of you. Chapter 5, verse 8. But you were sometimes darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is pleasing. with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it's a shame to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake, those of you who sleep, rise up from the dead, and Christ shall give you what? Life. Life. Seeing that you don't walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise, redeem the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of God is for you. Let's pray. At this time, God, we beg you, as we watch this new, fresh, falling snow, making a picture-perfect Christmas for all of us here at Zion, we ask that you would enter into this building and into the hearts and into the minds of these people who are gathered here and everyone watching on our program today, that you would bless them, fill them with your blessing, giving them the real warmth of a true Christmas, which comes only from your Christ Jesus, your Son. We pray for the next few moments that we would be blessed, not because we deserve it, but because we need it. We need your grace. We need your presence with us. May the Holy Spirit work through this word and pierce our hearts and help us to clearly see the light and the path you want us to walk. Thank you for this Christmas moment. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, something unusual that a preacher would seldom ask, I'm going to be asking that someone could help us turn out the house lights. Don't turn off the heat, just turn off the house lights. We don't want any lights except for those Christmas lights that are up here and behind me and these that burn on the community. I read the scripture so now we can do without the light. Now you're sitting in darkness. Snow is softly falling outside the church building. And you're in the dark. And for a while, if we sat like this, we would become a little bit uncomfortable. Because sometimes children are afraid of the dark. Sometimes adults are afraid of the dark. The first thing they want to do is reach for a light and turn it on. We need to realize that God has planned for you something very special today. That is to emphasize to you your need for the light of the Lord. What was it that shone all around those shepherds in the Christmas story? What was it that was sh the glory of the Lord shined all around them? What is glory? Nothing more than golden, godly, righteous light. What is Christ? 
Jesus is the light of the world. And here in the book of Ephesians, Paul makes a note, a Christmas passage, if you will. Once you were partakers with them in this ungodly set of actions, for you were sometimes darkness. He doesn't say you were in the darkness. He says in verse 8, you were darkness. Each of us who have fallen away from the path of Christ, who have not known Jesus or have been faithful to him, we were darkness. But don't despair. Don't be sad and don't be afraid. For now you are what? Light in the Lord. Look at verse 8. Now you are children of the light. We praise him in the light. And we honor him with light. For you see, the fruit of the Spirit, verse 9, what a powerful passage in the outline of your sermon, is goodness, righteousness, and truth. The fruit of the Spirit is in Goodness, righteousness, and truth. And so today, when we come forward, each of us to light our candle, I want you to think, and if you're willing to say something good, something righteous, some truth, not your own will, but something good that God has done, something righteous that you have seen done, something truthful that you have heard. Because this way we prove what is acceptable and righteous to God. Now don't have fellowship with people. Don't follow people. Don't go with people all the time who do the works of darkness. Because it's already uncomfortable in here in the dark. We start yearning for some light to come on. Now here is something very powerful, verse 12. It's a shame. It's even shameful. We can't even talk about some of the things they do in secret. Molesting children. Harming parents. Harming elderly. Robbing them. We can't even talk about such evil things. We don't want to because we know that's darkness. Here we are. We're at Zion. Here we are with a beautiful snow falling outside. Here we are, Christians, together in his name. God is the miracle worker. You're sitting in the midst of Jesus and miracles can happen all things are reproved that are evil by them and made manifest by the light. Verse 13. Whatever good, righteous, and true thing that can be said today opens up and makes manifest the light. Verse 14, he says, Wake up then. Now, when I was a boy, the three of us, Danny, David, and Douglas, on the farm, slept in the same room. Can you imagine that circus? We had a bunk bed and a small bed. My brother Dan slept down in the lower bunk, and I was on the upper bunk, and Doug was in the youth bed. He was the youngest. Still is the youngest. <laughs> My brother Dan is the oldest. I'm the most handsome. <laughs> I'm just kidding that's not really true I have to think of something to say because they're brilliant and here I am So, but we used to have this tradition at Christmas time we would lay in bed on Christmas Eve and we would do this thing where like we were so excited we couldn't breathe and we would say something like it's Christmas <laughs> oh my God. We just, it was incredible it was insane and then normally around 4 a.m. somebody would wake up and we would literally combat crawl down the hall to go see if Jesus had allowed Santa Claus to come to our house. We'd crawl down the hall. 
Number one to number two, bring it on. You know, here we are. <laughs> we get around to the living room. Now, my parents' bedroom was right by the living room. Right there. We'd look around. And then I'd hear my dad say, He hasn't come yet. <laughs> I'd fall back, go back to sleep for a few minutes. And then later, and Doug, if you're watching, remember, later, the lights would be on. Santa Claus would turn on the Christmas tree lights. And that's how we knew he'd come. And it was okay to wake up. Awake those of you who are sleeping. Wake up. Arise from the dead in darkness. And Christ will give you what? Light. Now we're going to have pancakes and we're going to have potato cakes and we're going to have all kinds of gifts today. And you've given me gifts. But what Christ is going to give you this Christmas season is unbelievable. He's going to light up your heart and light up your mind and light up your future. He is the light of Christmas. He is the light of your heart and the light of your world. Bask in the light. Well, you see... We must redeem the times. Verse 16, I promised you I was going to tell you what to buy. You can go buy a new air fryer. You can buy a new motorcycle. You could buy a new boat and then later sell it. You can buy a new car or a new truck, but you won't really have anything until you redeem the time with those who are around you. Let me ask you three questions. Why is it we wait to buy flowers for loved ones when they die? Why is it we wait to go to visitation to see family and friends and someone in our family die? Why is it that we say, I'm going to go to church when I get around to it? Why is it that we say, I'm going to get baptized, I am, I, I'm going to become a Christian. Some of these days, Paul says no. And that's not the way to do it. Redeem the time. Buy it up right now. Here's the gift that God wants to give you now. The light of everlasting life, the glory of shepherds and Christmas Eve, the power and glory of singing, angels and dancing, heavenly hosts, all for you if you will redeem the time. Make the time to put him, your Lord and Savior, this Christmas season now, better than gifts brighter than any Christmas light you've ever seen, more powerful than any angel you might have ever witnessed. Miracles. Miracles from the Father that come only to you who finally surrender in you. Now, <coughs> we have been sitting in the darkness and we're uncomfortable because we don't like sitting in dark. That's why we put all these lights in. <coughs> But we are not going to turn those lights on. We are going to be the light. We're going to be the lights of this congregation. We're going to be the light of Christ. We're going to be the light of God. And here's what we're going to do. As the preacher of this beautiful congregation, wonderful people, I have brought to you the Holy Word of God, the Scripture. You have heard it and you have listened. And so this light represents that word, the light of Christ, that lighteth up every person who comes into the world. You breathe because of this light of Jesus. You're able to walk because of the light of Christ. I am here today because of the light of Christ. Now, each of us, at the appointed moment, will walk up here and take this candle 
and light our candle and put it back. And stand here and say something good. Say something righteous. Say some truth. Or, if you prefer, not say anything at all. Just turn and look at this group of people gathered on this snowy morning in Meigs County, Ohio, and be blessed of God. Families with children, I want to make sure you put those children up here with you. Even if they don't say anything, make sure they are participating in this life. And watch what happens as we sit in almost better darkness on a cloudy, snowy day on this Sunday, and we like it. But before we can even do that, we have to make sure that this lamp is lit here. For you see, this lamp has been the representation of the gospel being preached and present in this region and community. This lamp, years ago, lit this building up before electricity. And watch what happens as our deacons and elders come forward just to light this lamp. We'll do that first. Men, if you would, please. These gentlemen have the grave responsibility of meeting together and along with several women in our congregation who make sure that we're staying on the true and narrow. And they're going to pass this light which represents the gospel being preached at Zion from person to person. And gentlemen, if you want to say something about your ministry here at Zion, we would be honored. But if you decide just to pass the candle, that's fine too. And Craig has the utter responsibility of lighting that lamp. And he's a very a delicate with this. So <laughs> if you would for just a moment, watch. If you would, please. Anything you want to say, or you can pass it on. Very thankful and blessed to be here this morning. And to have been here for years and years and years. They've kept me <clears throat> humble and on a better path. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will have the light of life. He does not have to walk in darkness. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to add my own thing. If you walk in the darkness, you will have darkness for eternity. You'll have no sun, no moon. No stars, no candle. I'm thankful for all that Christ gave up in that day yes. to come to bring us salvation about his sacrifice. We should have no hope of eternity. Amen. I want to thank Jesus for saving my life and give me a wonderful way. The help care of the mother, the Emperor Jesus, the mothers, brothers and sisters here in this church. We love you all so much and appreciate everything you do for me. I'm just glad to have <clears throat> Jesus in my life. Yes. I thank the Lord for everything. Amen. <clears throat> it has been revealed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, I am a servant of this congregation, and I am thankful for all of you. And, and that is the capacity that the Lord has shown me in my past ministry. I've been saved from the darkness several times. I got on my side of the one. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. The flag of my heart. Mm -hmm. Now the lamp is lit for Zion Church. 
Church of Christ, representing all of us who love and care about this congregation. We'll be placing the candle back in this location. I'm going to be asking these men, if they would, to bow their heads along with you, and I'm going to pray a blessing on them at this moment. Almighty God, we know that it is a great responsibility for any man or woman who helps a congregation move forward. And so we ask you to give these people wisdom and strength. We thank you for these men who love you, who are faithful, who give and give and give, and make this church continue to grow. Help them to see the light of Christ in their heart and the light on the path where this congregation is supposed to go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Now, for those of you who might be here without a candle, we have one down here for you. We are going to ask everybody to participate, even if you don't say a word. We're going to start here and work our way back on this side, then in the back and work our way up here to the front. Each person come forward. If you don't have a candle, we have some here. All you need to do is come forward. You can take this candle out of the cross holder. You can hold up your candle. You can light it in front of us. You can tell us why you selected this particular candle. You can tell what it represents. And you can talk about the goodness in your life and God. Most of you know, this is my candle. <coughs> which represents the glory of the Father and has the aroma of coffee. <laughs> Did you expect anything else? <laughs> My journey to come here each Sunday morning begins with a large cup of coffee. And as I come up here, I notice wondrous things and look forward to the moment when I get to be with you and preach the gospel. The light of men and women and young people, the gospel of Jesus, the saving message of Christ. A few of us remember when those lamps lit this building. I'm one of the ones that does, and I think I and probably Harlow, my brother Bob, probably remembers when those lamps were all down both sides, one up front, lit this building. We remember when the electric was put in here. Had a big fluorescent light up here, and back when fluorescent lights were new, somebody started a rumor that that light would break and kill everybody in here. <laughs> so they took it down. Thank you. I am very thankful to be here, and I thank all of you for accepting to.
Uh, I just want to say thank you to June and Roger, who uh, at a time in Craig and I's life, we were in a very dark, dark place. And for some reason, we kept running into them. And she's my aunt. And we kept running into them at Walmart. And they invited us. And we're like, no, no, no. We're too dark. We've got things going on that's not good. But we see them again, and they invite us. And then we were at a place where we ran into them, and we were like, yeah. what's going on? And so we came here, and the two of us were just like, the people of this church are so loving, and it was just like, oh, this is what we need. And it really, 15 years ago, impacted our life, but then having our own children here, and my two sisters coming here, it's just been such a blessing. Like you, you have no idea. Uh, the people here there. are just full of love for anyone and everyone, and we thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to be part of the family. Mm -hmm. Just very blessed. Gets to show you how well or not well we work together. <laughs> uh, we're so grateful to be here. I told Linda, I said, find a candle that has two different colors in it so we can show us, like us, two different people uh, blending together. Yes. You know? So, 36 years ago, I was in a dark place. In the light, you know, when you're in the dark, you don't go to the light. The light has to be coming to you. Mm -hmm. If you're in the dark, you stay in the dark and you stay kind of hidden from one another. You know? You're afraid to step out somehow because you're in the dark. But hallelujah, this light came to me. And she brought me back to the light, mm -hmm. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I am so thankful for that today. And we're kind of thankful I think she wants to say <laughs> <laughs> about coming with Josiah. Um, for a while, we've been looking for a different congregation because we left where we've been. And finally I said, you want to try Zion? Mm -hmm. He said, well, we might as well. <laughs> and um, Let's go. I was on the cradle list here. <laughs> my parents brought me here when I was first born. A lot of you know I was here all my life, raised our children here. And um, I walked in that door and I knew I was home. There you go. I was home. I could uh, sit and have memories of my dad carrying me out of here on Sunday night, Wednesday night, on his shoulder. So, you know, And uh, I'm just so blessed to be here where we belong. Amen. Well, I think she forgot too that she also saw Dave's preaching. That's here. true. <laughs> I think, That's another reason she I, wanted to I her. think we came once and, right. and I said, they said, well, why don't you come back? I said, you get a good preacher here, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
You can just sing a song while you're <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep out from catching the on fire. <laughs> And he did do a great job on that stage. <laughs> Our fan was pretty angels, and I know you believe that I hope it is. These are my grandchildren. And when I don't feel like getting up some mornings, I make sure that I get up. And <laughs> they love coming to church. Good they love man. coming here. They really do. Good and they keep me motivated, don't you? Yes. They're such good singers. They are. Yes. And they're pretty good boys. Good. They're good boys. <laughs> Oh, you turn that candle to go away. Well, I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for all that He's done for me. Thankful for my family. Thankful for the church here. I'm thankful for everything and that Jesus is in my life. And I, he'll tell you, I couldn't decide on a candle. <laughs> I went through. We got three so, in my home. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up and I just made this. I wanted something religious on it and it had a uh, nativity on it. But on the back side I didn't realize it was going to be snowing because in case you can see this is a snowman. Yeah. <laughs>
truly, I think, love began when God became a man, and our world has never been the same. And I'm thankful to Jesus for his, my life and my salvation. Amen. I praise God this morning for everything he's given me in my life. He's been so good to me. I can write volumes of everything that he placed on me. And I am for a long time. But I had great parents to begin with. And when they took us to church very early in the class. I thank God for that. I was raised up to believe in the Bible, believe in Christ. And I never did question the Bible in I was four years old when Zion first opened up again for being closed for a while. We started then, my parents had <coughs> come clean this mess up here that I started. And I just have so much to be thankful for on that day. I am and I am. I thank God for Jesus in my life, for my life, and for my church family. Amen. Hey, I thank him for bonding every day, too. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got a Okay, I chose a balsam candle, that's my favorite smell, and snowflakes because I love the snow. <laughs> and the Lord has blessed both of us in many ways, and we're thankful to be here. I love this church, and I love my family. Amen. I love all of you. Hallelujah. God made it snow just for you this morning. Yes.
I'm so thankful for God. He's uh, brought me through so much. And, uh, not many people know this, uh, when I was what, 18 months old, I was struck down with uh, laryngitis. And back then, they didn't know a whole lot about anything. I mean, serious like that. And, uh, and I was in the hospital for not know how long. Mom could tell you more. And uh, and the doctors tried a lot of things. They more or less used to be the guinea pig. And he finally told mom that uh, he was going to try one last thing. And if that didn't work, he didn't guarantee nothing. And thank God to the last thing that he did try and brought me out of it. And that's one thing, one thing that God saved me <coughs> brought me through. And then, uh, oh, there's been several things during my life that God has had a hand in and helped me through. And, and then uh, eight years ago, I was struck down with Cancer. And uh, well, uh, when we finally got to work, I mean, the doctor said he was going to call me personally, you know, either yay or nay. And uh, he, when I got the call, uh, he said, You have it in both breasts. And some in your lymph nodes. And it, that was just one devastating day. Jeff and I just cried so hard, so, so much. And it was very, very hard on me because I said, I, and you know, I right then there, shortly thereafter, I prayed to God. I said, God, can I handle this? I leave it at your feet. If you want me to stay alive with the family, I will. And, you know, and if you don't, I'll be coming home to you. Either way, I win. So, uh, you, I'm here today. Amen. <laughs> And I thank God for that. And, and my husband, I just, I just couldn't live without him. He's been so much help to me. Yeah. And when, when uh, he found my hand cancer, he said, you're not going to do anything. I will do everything. Yeah. And he has treated me like a queen yeah. ever since. And I can't thank you all enough for your prayers and everything during my time. I have I thank God. He's just my best friend, my all in all, and he's it. Amen. I think Jesus, like 50 years ago, something to him, a senior, was in a car accident. I wasn't trying to write him. And we all got to the driver's door. And I was knocked unconscious for a month and a half, about a month, and a month or so. And the doctor told my parents to <coughs> make funeral. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I went, when I came to, I'd just be a vegetable. I wouldn't know nothing, couldn't do anything or anything, but I fooled them. Mother, she's there with me. And I came out of the hospital. And He's helped me. I, I mean, I don't do very good with that walking run, but my God's there with me. And he's helped me a lot, an awful lot, and I love him so much. He's been there for me. And I got a beautiful wife, and, and we're thankful for him. And <coughs> we love you all so much here at Zion. Praise God.
John for all the people here at Zion and my brother, sister in law, and daughter, and her husband, and Bill and Kay McElroy are good friends. They bring me to church every Sunday. Without all you friends here and for Dave being our minister. And I just want to thank everyone for all their kindness to me. First of all, I would like to say that my candle is peach cobbler, <laughs> and I think it goes quite well with the coffee. <laughs> but on a serious note, um, I have been in the church since I was a little, well, middle school. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to grow up in church and go to church camp and Bible college and all those wonderful things that's helped me to be who I am. But I have been searching for church and I've visited different places and I, Peggy has been saying, come to church, come to church, come to church. Well, I didn't. <laughs> And finally, um, I just decided that, you know, I've looked around, I'm going to come here. And I remember way back when I was in camp and Bob Patel was the preacher and visiting with uh, Melanie and Tina and, you know, we had fun, but you know, we were kids, you know, and um uh, Anyway, I'm glad that I decided to come here. And this is unconventional time to say this, but I would like to place my membership today. God will provide everything you need. So I needed a candle, and I couldn't figure out which one. So Keegan and Keaton gave me a candle last week. <laughs> it's Arctic Breeze. <laughs> so it should go well with coffee and all these other fragrances, right? I really wanted to look for one that would distinguish the, like, snuff out all the smell. <laughs> But I've been listening to all of you, and I hope that you guys all feel the love that I feel because it is so here, and God's Spirit is here. Yes. And we have so much to be thankful for. I couldn't even stand up here and tell you all the blessings that I've had and the miracles. Mm -hmm. So I won't, because I know you're all hungry, and you want to eat some pancakes. <laughs> Amen. You want to say anything? <laughs> I don't want to do all the talking, but if you want to say anything, now's your turn.
foundation and thank you for the kids and everything. And we're blessed. Yes, and we just thank God. And we give him praise and all the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm thankful for a couple of people in this room, my parents, for introducing me to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they have, uh, that's been a blessing to me. Even then when I went to the stage, I didn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Even on that stage, I didn't understand. They still drug me here. <laughs> and even though they taught me to dance, sometimes one arm dances, you know. <laughs> but I'm thankful for them, for all they do in my life. They're a blessing to me. I'm thankful for my family, my personal family. Michelle, my wife. She does all the stuff for us. Uh, she, she's big in our family as far as making sure everything is complete and so forth, taking care of us. And my sons, Theo and Jay, and the gospel has been shared with each other. And uh, I'm thankful for them. And last, I'm thankful for you, the congregation here. You do more for me than I could ever speak. Um, and I, it is just, my love for you that I do the thing for this congregation. We are here to educate, learn more about God, and edify. And we, the, heart, the world is hard on us throughout the week. And we need a respite place to go. And it's here among you. And I love each and every one of you. You would make an impact in my life more than you know. We have one more candle to light, and that's for the people who are watching this program. You know, it's an amazing moment when you think about people who are not necessarily sitting right here with us, but are here with us on this live stream today. And so for those of you who are watching, we're going to light this candle for you. This congregation saying to you that there's no greater experience in all the world, as you've heard, than being a Christian and with a loving family in a church. So you're distant from us, away from us. It's a virtual connection. But we're going to light this candle so that you know you're not forgotten. burns for everyone watching our program and may God bless you richly. Here's the problem. They don't get to eat. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Now, don't blame me for a long sermon. It's been worth it, hasn't it? Now, we're going to let these candles burn. We're not going to turn these lights on because I want you out of here and in there. So give us a few minutes to get ready. How many are wanting a Mountain Dew pancake? Let me see the hands. Okay, I see two, three, or four. Okay, I'm going to try. I'll make it. Well, Jeff, 
You'll eat anything, brother, so I don't know. It's true. Let's go. We're going to leave these candles burn. Uh, children, please don't stick your finger in the candle wax. Let's be standing, please. We'll sing our hymn of invitation. We've already had one decision this morning during this wonderful message. And if you have a decision that you'd like to make, if any of the women need to go to the back, you may do so now. Verse 87, a beautiful, beautiful song. First and last stanza, Silent Night, Holy Night. festivity, we ask you to bless the food that would nourish our bodies. And those who cannot join us around this table, we pray your blessing on them as well, that they'll have a time of peace and rest. God, thank you for Jesus in this wonderful season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.